Branson from GMAT Ninja here, and welcome to the seventh episode of our sentence correction series. In this episode, we're going to be covering modifiers, and specifically the modifiers that, which, the modifier who, and other similar modifiers. These all, if we were to use a technical term, are called relative pronouns. And some of others that you could throw in there would be something like where, when it's used as a modifier. Um, and again, similarly, similar to where, that is not always used as a modifier either. And so we're specifically talking about that when it's used as a modifier in this uh, particular episode. And so before we dive into some examples, I just want to touch on two things that are out there uh, as it relates to these modifiers, that which, who, and friends where there is a little bit of some misinformation out there or some things that are commonly stated but not actually true. First thing I want to touch on before we get into these examples, and I actually will have an example just to show this to you, but the first thing I want to touch on is the touch rule. Now, many of you may have heard the touch rule taught that the word that or the word which when used as a modifier needs to directly touch what it's modifying. And the thing is that that's not actually true. It really just, we want to check whether it makes sense and whether it is reasonably close to what it modifies. But a little bit of that can depend on context. And so it doesn't have to be exactly next to whatever it modifies. And, and really the question we want to be asking ourselves, as is often the case on sentence correction, we don't want to get far away from, well, is this logical? Does this make sense? That sort of thing. So the touch rule is out there, and you're going to see a few examples of this. It's not really 100%. You, I, I really want to make any decisions based on this does touch or this doesn't touch. Really what I'm asking myself, you don't want to turn off your logical brain. Really what I'm asking myself is, is this, is it clear what that or which modifies? And to be clear, it should be reasonably close to whatever it modifies. Second thing that I want to say is this, is that... Um, that versus which or which versus that is something that we get a lot of questions about that students seem to lock into. The difference between that and which doesn't really get tested all that much on the GMAT. So to give you a real example, I'll just cover it for you here at the beginning, but I want you to know which versus that is not really a big deal on the GMAT. Um, and I can think of very few or actually none off the top of my head uh, examples where that versus which is tested in terms of which one of those two modifiers is appropriate. To give you a quick example, though, um, if I were to say something like the GMAT book that is on the table is useless, or I were to say the GMAT book, which is on the table, is useless, those two sentences, that and which, they do, there is a difference between that and which. If I say the GMAT book that is on the table is useless, then that implies that there are other GMAT books in the room. However, if I say the GMAT book, which is on the table, is useless, then I know the GMAT book is on the table, but it doesn't seem like there are other GMAT. I, there could be other GMAT books in the room. Maybe there are. Maybe there aren't. I just know the GMAT book, which is on the table, is useless. So, again, that doesn't really get tested all that often. And you can see why, because it would – It's it, because uh, – Sentence correction very often comes down to meaning, even with many of these definite errors. And how am I supposed to know whether there are other GMAT books in the room or there are not other GMAT books in the room? Wouldn't it really make sense? With that said, um, I want to dive into a few examples and take a look at some of these together. So the first one that we have up here is this. The zoo, which is open to the public, houses animals from every continent. So this example right here off the bat, first thing I'm going to do is I notice that I have the word which, and in this case, it is modifying. I, I, want, I want to know what it is modifying. I'm going to look to identify what it is modifying. So which is open to the public? What is open to the public? The zoo, right here. The zoo, which is open to the public. The zoo is open to the public, houses animals from every continent. That works great. It's very clear to me which modifies the zoo. The zoo is open to the public. Works awesome. Second example I have up here is this. The zoo houses animals from every continent, which is open to the public. Now, here again, I notice that I have the word which. And 
here I run into a little bit of confusion because which is open to the public? Well, what is open to the public? In this instance, it seems like every continent is what I'm modifying. And it seems to me like every continent is open to the public. But is that really the is that really a logical meaning for the sentence that every continent is open to the public? I don't actually know uh, that that would make sense. Obviously, every continent is open to the public, or is every continent open to the public? I don't know. It doesn't really make sense. It seems like I would probably be trying to say that the zoo is open to the public, but uh, there's some confusion. And so I really don't like this version of the sentence as much as I like this version of the sentence. And if I were given the choice between these two, I would certainly say that this more clearly expresses uh, a logical and sound meaning. And finally here, I have this third example, which says one of the best animals that is black and white at the zoo is the Malayan taper. Uh, and that is how you pronounce that word because I looked it up before I filmed this video. So one of the best animals that is at the zoo, that I'm sorry, that is black and white at the zoo is the Malayan taper. Now, here, I notice that I have the word that serving as a modifier. Now I'm going to ask myself, okay, that is black and white. What is black and white? Well, in this instance, if I were being very literal, and this is a great example of how the touch rule doesn't really always apply, and one of the reasons that we don't really teach it as a rule, because technically, What's that touching? It's touching animals. Now, that would, if I were being really strict about the touch rule, I'd be like, well, this says that animals is black and white. And obviously, I don't want to say that animals is black and white. I want to say one of the best animals, one of the animals that is black and white, one that is black and white at the zoo is the Malayan taper. So, what, but what I do know is this is that that, what is it that it could reasonably modify? earlier in the sentence. And the one thing that it could reasonably modify earlier in the sentence is one of those animals. Part, one reason that it couldn't modify animals, by the way, is because I have is and not are. But here, this is just an example, one final example I wanted to go through just to show that, okay, here, even though that doesn't touch one, which is what it's technically modifying, it is okay because Clearly, the only thing earlier in the sentence that that is intended to modify would be one. And so, and part of that also is because, again, I have the word is after that. And is would only take as a subject one and not animals. So, and those are just a few basic examples before we dive into some shortened versions, um, pared down versions of some official questions. And we're going to dive into those in just a second. But those are some things that you want to keep in mind as we start to look at these examples together. I'll give you a second to take a look at this one and work through it. And after that, we'll come back and work through it together on board. Awesome. Hopefully you've had a second to work through this one. The question says, in 1969, Apollo 11 was launched into space, which led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. And so I want to take a look at this one together on the board. But you'll notice right away, I see that I have the word which. Here. When I look... I've got which right here. And so automatically, when I see which functioning there as a modifier, I'm going to ask myself, okay, what is it that which modifies? In other words, what is it that led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon? Well, the nearest noun that which would modify would be space. So did space lead to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon? No, that does not make sense. I could 
maybe say that it refers back to Apollo 11 was launched. Apollo 11 led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. But again, that's so far back in the sentence and the, the noun closest that would, which would most reasonably modify is which. In fact, Apollo 11 is all the way back at the very beginning of the sentence. And also, I'm not sure that I could say Apollo 11 led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Uh, maybe the mission of Apollo 11, or but I think in the context of this sentence, Apollo 11 was launched. So Apollo 11 is a spacecraft. A spacecraft led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. No, that doesn't work either. So, and beyond that, I think that Apollo 11 is probably so far back that it's really not very clear that which modifies that. Next, I'm going to look at B. B says Apollo 11 was launched into space, an event that led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Again, here I have that functioning as a modifier. What would that modify? An event. What event led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon? Well, the event of Apollo 11 being launched into space. And so here, B much more clearly expresses the sentence, logically it works, space didn't lead to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, uh, a spacecraft did not lead to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, but it would make sense that that spacecraft being launched into space, that event led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. And so here, B is going to be correct. I can eliminate A, B is going to be the, the best answer choice. Now, I really like this example because if, especially if you're a native English speaker, I think that A sounds very good to me. Maybe also if you're a non-native English speaker, but A sounds very good to me. Apollo 11 was launched into space, which led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. I totally would say that all the time if I was just hanging out, but doesn't work on the GMAT. Also, I would probably never say what we have written in B, Apollo 11 was launched into space, an event that led to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. That sort of absolute phrase is what this is called at the end of the sentence, which I don't want to get it into in this video, but that sort of absolute phrase sounds very awkward to me. However, even if that sounds awkward to me, because good sentence correction process, I'm focused on definite errors. I notice in A, I have a definite error, right? Which seems to refer to space, which did not lead to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Even if I were to say that it referred to Apollo 11, which it doesn't refer to that. But even if I were to argue that a spacecraft did not lead to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, um, I can eliminate A. And so following good sentence correction process, definite error in A, A is out. B may sound a little awkward to me, but I don't want to go based on how things sound. And so I can go with B. And B is the best answer choice here. I want to take a look at another pared down official example, and we'll talk through this one together as well. Awesome. Hopefully you've had a chance to work through this one. The question says, many college age students believe that Steve Jobs personifies the hope and possibility for success that come with dropping out of college. Let's go ahead and look at this one together on the board. So the first thing I'm going to look at here is I'm going to notice that I have the word that functioning as a modifier right here. Now it's worth noting that I actually have the word that two times in this sentence, and that the word that here is not functioning as a modifier. So as we've said at the beginning of this video, that sometimes functions as a modifier, sometimes it doesn't function as a modifier. In this video, we're focusing on when it does function as a modifier and how it 
in what role it should serve them. So here we have the word that, um, the hope and possibility for success that come with dropping out of college. So there must be then something that comes with or uh, some things that come with dropping out of college. Now, when I look at this first example with A, I see so that come with dropping out of college. So in other words, when I notice that I have the word come here, what I'm going to recognize is that that word come, that's the uh, plural form of that verb, right? I would say um, he comes, they come, right? And so here I have that come with dropping out of college. And so that must then refer to something plural before it. So I'm going to look before the word that, see what it could logically modify that is plural and what, what it would make sense for it to modify. In this case would be the hope and possibility for, for success. So Steve Jobs personifies the hope and possibility for success. What hope and possibility for success? The hope and possibility for success that come with dropping out of college. So there's hope that comes with dropping out of college, and there's a possibility for success that comes with dropping out of college. So A seems pretty good to me here. I'm going to then look at B. I'm going to leave A in. I'll then look at B. And with B, what it says is the hope and possibility for success that comes with dropping out of college. Now, if you're like me, that sounds a lot better to your ear, but we don't want to use your ear here. So I'm going to look, and I've got the word that, again, functioning as a modifier. After the word that, I have that comes with dropping out of college. Again, like I just said a moment ago, comes is the singular form of the verb. And so that then must refer to something singular before. So what is there that is singular before the word that, which it could logically refer to? Well, it could probably refer to success. So success that comes with dropping out of college. And that could work. It could also probably refer to possibility for success. Possibility for success that comes with dropping out of college. And both of those seem fine to me initially at first glance. But when I think about it a little bit more deeply, okay, so if that refers to possibility for success, let's say. Steve Jobs personifies two things. Number one, he personifies the hope. And number two, he personifies the possibility for success that comes with dropping out of college. Well, the problem here is that now all of a sudden, rather than Steve Jobs personifying as an A, Steve Jobs person personified the hope that comes with dropping out of college and the possibility for success that comes with dropping out of college. Well, here in B, Steve Jobs personifies the possibility for success that comes with dropping out of college, which is great, but Steve Jobs now personifies the hope. And for Steve Jobs just to personify the hope, that's kind of a weird thing to say. If I were to say that he, the hope for what is the question that comes to mind then, right? But because that comes is just singular, it can only refer to the possibility for success. Technically, it could also refer to success. So there's a little bit of ambiguity there, but that ambiguity is not necessarily wrong. It's really that, okay, that comes now modifies the possibility for success, which is great, totally works with possibility for success, but the hope has nothing modifying it now. So Steve Jobs personifies the hope, which is a weird thing to say and not something that we'd say. What type of hope? What hope is it that he per personifies? Not just the grand big hope or something like that. So that is why I would then eliminate B and A is the better version of this sentence here. With those two under our belt, we're going to take an opportunity to take a look at a couple official examples. We've taken a look at a couple tweaked, modified, pared down official examples. And now we're gonna look at some full official examples together. And so I'm gonna pop this one up on the screen and give you a bit of time to work through it. And then afterwards we'll come back and we'll take a look at it together.
Awesome. Hopefully you've had a chance to work through this one. The prompt says, although a number of excellent studies narrate the development of domestic technology and its impact on housewifery, these works do not discuss the contributions of women employed by manufacturers and utility companies as product demonstrators and publicists who initially promoted new and unfamiliar technology to female consumers. So I want to take a look at this one together on the board. And as we look at this, one thing that happens is this question can actually be appear pretty intimidating um, until you notice something that comes right after the underlined portion of the sentence. And right after the underlined portion of the sentence, I have the word who. Now this word who right there, what that tells me, who, who is functioning here as a modifier. And so again, I'm going to look for something reasonably close here to who, that who could modify. In this instance, when I look at the sentence and it says that, um, that, that, that I have the women employed by manufacturers and utility companies as product demonstrators and publicists who initially promoted. So who are the people who initially promoted? Well, the product demonstrators and the publicists. These are the who that initially promoted new and unfamiliar technology to female customers. So right now, I don't have a problem with A. I'm going to keep that here. When I look at B, B says that the that the 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 women employed to be product demonstrators and publicists by manufacturers and utility companies who initially promoted new and unfamiliar technology to female customers. Well, now here's the problem: is that this seems to indicate that who here is going to modify manufacturers and utility companies. And the problem with that is this, is that based on what the sentence has told me, is it the manufacturers and utility companies who initially promoted new and unfamiliar technology to female consumers, or is it the women who were employed to be product demonstrators and publicists that initially um, promoted the new and unfamiliar technolo technology to female consumers. Well, it's definitely the women, because that was the whole purpose that for, of them being employed, was that they were going to then promote these tech, not new and unfamiliar technologies to female consumers. So my problem with B is that who seems to refer to manufacturers and utility companies, and who really here should refer to product demonstrators and publicists. So... And I get it. Some people may argue, well, who can only refer to people? So who must refer to product demonstrators and publicists and it can't refer to manufacturers and utility companies. But again, here I'm looking for the I, I think that's a fairly weak case. And I'm looking here for a a the best version of the sentence. And so which version of the sentence is best and A is definitely better in that regard in that A tells me who clearly refers to product demonstrators and publicists, whereas who in B seems to refer to manufacturers and utility companies. So I can eliminate B for that reason because who refers to the wrong thing. Now here in C, C says to demonstrate and publicize, women employed to demonstrate and publicize their products by manufacturers and utility companies. Well, first of all, this version of the sentence, just in general, women employed to demonstrate and publicize their products. I don't exactly love the use of their, but this is not a pronoun video. So you can check out our pronoun video for more on that sort of thing. And here again, I'm going to focus on the modifier. The modifier who seems to, same issue as I had with B, modify manufacturers and utility companies. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to eliminate C. With D, by manufacturers and utility companies to be demonstrators and publicists of their products. Okay. So not exactly the same problem as what I had with B and C, but again, I have who right after this. And so it seems like who refers to their products. And really what I would prefer is that who refers to 
uh, demonstrators and publicists. Also, I've got a little bit of a problem with the idea that they were um, publicists of their products. I don't, I don't love the, the way that the sentence flows, but the main problem is that I have the who here seems to refer to their products when really who should refer to product demonstrators or in this instance, demonstrators and publicists. And so I'm gonna eliminate D on that basis. And with E by manufacturers and utility companies to demonstrate and publicize their products. And again, at the end here, I have who, and who seems to refer to products. Um, and again, that would be problematic in this sentence. So in all of these, and I'm gonna eliminate E, in all of these errant answers, you'll, you'll notice that I have a modifier that seems to be modifying something that it's not supposed to modify, right? I want who, who initially promoted new and unfamiliar technologies. Well, who is that supposed to refer to? That should refer to the women who were employed as product demonstrators and publicists, the product demonstrators and publicists. A, clearly who refers to product demonstrators and publicists. Again, remember here that I'm looking for the best version of the sentence because I can imagine that there are those who, like with B, would say, well, who could it refer to manufacturers and utility companies? So it has to refer to product demonstrators and publicists, so it's just fine. But again, I'm looking for the best answer. I wish that these rules were more 100% and that these rules were more, you just follow this exact same process every time. But the way that it is, and as they're testing your reasoning, not your ability to just memorize rules, I'm looking for the best version of the sentence, the most clear version of the sentence that produces a logical, reasonable sentence. And who in A more clearly modifies product demonstrators and publicists than who in B would modify product demonstrators or publicists. Or even you could say um, who in D would modify demonstrators and publicists. So looking for the best version of the sentence, one thing to remember here. And number two, that I have here a modifier that's not actually in the underlying portion of the sentence. Just because it's in, not in the underlying portion of the sentence doesn't mean I can throw it out. Just because it seems like, well, it's just this last clause here, I can toss out the rest. You can't do that. So looking for the best version of the sentence, A, most clearly shows how who would refer to product demonstrators and publicists, which is exactly what I want. And then also, uh, even though I have something that comes after the underlying portion of the sentence, it's still relevant, it's still important, because many people would just toss out that who and not even pay attention to it. And you miss out on some easy eliminations if you do that. I want to go ahead and take a look at a, another example here. I'll toss this up on the screen, and then we'll give you a second to work through it.
Awesome. Hopefully you've had a second to work through this one. The question says the use of lie detectors is based on the assumption that lying produces emotional reactions in an, in an individual that in turn create unconscious physiological responses. Okay, so let's take a look at this one together on the board. The first thing that I'm going to notice here is again, look at this surprise on the modifiers video. We have the word that that is serving as a modifier. And so when I see that, my mind first goes to, okay, what does that modify? First, I notice that that create unconscious physiological responses. Okay, so because I have that create, that create um, is create is in the plural form, creates would be singular. He creates, they create. So create is the plural form. So I have to look for a plural noun prior to that, which that could modify. Obviously that couldn't modify individual here. And so I would have to say that that modifies emotional reactions. So emotional reactions that create unconscious physiological responses. That actually seems to make sense to me. So I'm going to keep A in here. When I look at B, I have something very similar that creates unconscious physiological responses in turn. Now, I could make a big deal of splits and be like, well, should in turn be here or should in turn be at the end? And I could obsess over that into eternity. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to focus in on my definite errors. Again, I've got the word that, which is serving as a modifier here. That creates, you'll notice that because I have creates, creates is the singular form of the verb. And so that must modify something singular before it. What could that modify that's singular before it? Well, an individual. So lying produces emotional reactions in an individual that creates unconscious physiological responses in turn. Here's the problem, though, and this is why I don't turn off my logical brain as I'm working through sentence correction. An individual that creates unconscious physiological responses. Well, if the individual is creating the physiological responses, then they're not unconscious anymore. So for that reason, I'd go ahead and eliminate B. An individual doesn't create unconscious physiological responses because if the individual creates those responses, then they are not unconscious. If I look at C, that lying produces emotional reactions in an individual creating in turn unconscious physiological responses? Well, so creating here is a modifier, and I don't wanna to get too deep into this because we'll actually have um, another video where we talk a little bit about ING modifiers, but creating here is a, is, is a, serves as a modifier. And I could say, well, creating modifies individual, so an individual creates unconscious physiological responses which would be a problem, just like what I had in B, for the same reason that I had in B, an individual creates those responses, then they're no longer unconscious. But I could also say, well, creating refers back to emotional reactions, which would be okay, right? Because emotional reactions could create unconscious physiological responses. However, because I'm not sure what creating refers to, in one way it would be right, one way it would be wrong, and especially because the closer way, the individual, right? It seems like more likely that it's modifying individual would not make sense logically. I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate C because it creates a little bit of ambiguity that A doesn't have. And again, when I say ambiguity, I want you to think anytime I have ambiguity on the GMAT, it's wrong. It's simply that I have a better version of the sentence that more clearly expresses a logical sound meaning in A. Here in D, so lying produces emotional reactions in an individual to create in turn physiological responses that are unconscious. Okay, so there's a couple things here in D that I don't love. And I, I if, if you were going through this and D was the first thing that you saw, could you talk me into keeping it? Maybe, probably not, but maybe, let's say. But but here, the problem that I have is lying produces emotional reactions to create physiological responses. So it almost seems to imply that lying produces those 
emotional reactions in order to create unconscious. But it's more than just lying produces emotional reactions. As a result, these reactions happen to also create, not that the reason that lying produces emotional reactions is in order to create these physiological responses. So I don't love that. That's the first thing I don't love. The other thing that I don't love, is, and, and again, is that, am I going to right off the bat? I don't know, but I don't like it. Uh, and, and then it's not one of my definite errors that I'm looking at, but it is something meaning wise. I just feel a little bit iffy on it. And then I'll also notice at the end that I have physiological responses that are unconscious. And again, I don't know that I love. So by the way, I have another that here, um, which is serving as a modifier. So what type of physiological responses, physiological responses that are unconscious. But I don't love here that I have physiological responses that are unconscious. Seems like I could probably just say unconscious physiological responses. Again, are either of those definite errors? Yeah, not necessarily. But when I take those two things together, it's kind of two strikes against D. A was a lot more clear. It was a lot it more clearly expressed the uh, uh, something with a logical meaning, uh, a sentence with a logical meaning. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate D. And finally, when I uh, when I get down to E, um, it says who creates unconscious physiological responses in turn. And so again, I have a modifier this time. My modifier is who, who creates, right? An individual who creates, uh, so I'm gonna ask myself, who's the who, right? Who creates unconscious physiological responses in turn? In this instance, obviously who would be the individual? Individual creates unconscious physiological responses in turn. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Why would an individual create unconscious physiological responses? If they're unconscious, they can't, that individual can't create those. So I can, for that reason, go ahead and eliminate E, and I'm left with A as the best version of that sentence. So again, there you'll see how focusing in on that modifier, making sure that it modifies what it's supposed to modify, and that it logic that the sentence makes sense with what it modifies is super important. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Just a few key things to take away from this video. Number one, with, with and, and anytime you see the word that or which, or, or anytime you see the word that functioning as a modifier, anytime you see the word which, uh, or you see something similar, right? You could be who, could be where when it's functioning as a modifier. When you see those modifiers, you're gonna wanna look for the noun that it modifies. You're gonna wanna make sure that logically, it makes sense for that or which or who or where or whatever it may be to modify that noun. And we want to make sure that the sentence is going to make sense the way that it's written. Again, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you in future videos.